Okay, let's try an example analysis of a pumping test. Here's some data for the pumping test up in the upper left hand corner. The pumping rate is 7 cubic feet per minute. The data will be measured from a monitoring well at a radial distance of 50 feet. Aquifer thickness, the distance to a stream, and we can see that over here on this map. So we've got a, a, a small sketch map that shows the site. This is a stream and here's the pumping well and the monitoring well. The radius of the well is given and we have also the drawdown at time equals a thousand minutes. So the objective here is to determine these things. The test was conducted and here are the data. The pumping was stopped at a thousand minutes. So that's the last measurement that was taken during pumping. This is the drawdown at that time and we'll use that to get the well efficiency. When we make these measurements we have the, the elapsed time this is DTW, the depth to water. What's happening here is there's a monitoring well. Here is the water level in the well, and somebody's up here with a tape measuring that distance uh, below the top of the casing. And so then when there's drawdown, the, de the distance increases. So this is depth to water, and then uh, depth to water minus the initial depth to water that will give us the drawdown so this column is the drawdown here and then if we plot the drawdown as a function of time we get this plot shown here and the first part of it is for pumping and then the, the pump is shut off right here at a thousand minutes so yeah, we're pumping here and then we recover after that okay so that's the test and we want to analyze this so the first thing that we'll do is plot the data up on a semi-log plot. So I just took this same plot here. That's that's this data. This is time and this is drawdown. So I took that and I plotted it using a log scale on the x-axis. What happens then is that the plot looks quite a bit different and the data change so that we have this. It, it's curved here right at the beginning at, at early time and then it goes to this straight line portion. So this is the semi-log straight line from the Jacob analysis. And then this part here is recovery. And we don't care about recovery on this plot. So that'll be the part of the data that we'll want to analyze. And then down here, it's hard to see, but what I've done is to to take these data starting right here, starting at that one, at that time. Well, actually, I guess maybe think about it over here. So this would be t over t minus t1. So I have a calculate those data. And for this one here, the first, the first point, that would be calculated like this. 1010 is t. So then it's 1010 minus t1, which is 1,000. And so that's going to equal 1,010 divided by 10. So that, I guess, is going to equal 101. So the first point right here during recovery has a, a value of t over t minus t1 of 101. So that's plotting. Maybe that's plotting even off of the page. It would be right here. Let's see. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. So here it is. That's got a drawdown of 16.2, so that would be right up here someplace. I just didn't extend the, the scale over past 100. And then as the, sh as the recovery time increases, we calculate, uh, we make this calculation for the rest of the, the points. And then we can plot them up here, so this will be the next point, and the next point, and so on. And then we'll be interested in, in these data. Remember, we're not we're not interested in the early time data and these are the early time data for the recovery. Okay, so we're going to use these two plots, this one and this one, to analyze the data. This is the data and this is the information that you need to analyze one of these pumping tests. So what I want you to do is sort of pause the video right now and then move ahead and work on the analysis on your own. You can print out a copy of this page, work it up, and give it a try. After you've done that, then go ahead and start the video again, and I'll show you how I did the analysis, and I'll give you the results so you can check yourself. Let's go ahead and fit that line.
straight line to the straight line part of the data or to the late time part of the data. And then what I'm going to do is calculate the slope of this green line. And this is an important part and this is where people often make mistakes. The slope of this line is calculated like this. Slope is always going to be a change of y or a change of x. But in this case, we're going to forget about these units because we've drawn this as a log scale and so that is that's one log unit, one log cycle. That's one log cycle. So x, a delta x will be one log cycle or per log cycle. So in this case the slope is the change in y per log cycle. So what I've done is to draw this little red box, the, the dash box in. I did that because it spans one log cycle here and it intersects the, the line right there and right there. And so this just ends up being um, a delta y of 10 feet over one log cycle. So for this example, delta y is 10 feet and delta x is one log cycle. This log cycle has no units, so the slope is just 10 feet. Okay, so that's what we get for the slope of the green line, the line that fits the data. And then we also need to get the intercept, and the, remember the intercept is going to be the extrapolation of the green line to the point where the drawdown equals zero. So when I, draw, when I extrapolated this out, I get that point right there. It's hard for the stylus to draw very precisely, so I, I, that red arrow that I just drew is shifted off a little bit. But it looks to me like the green arrow comes and comes down and intersects the x-axis where um, the drawdown is equal to zero at about nine minutes. So t0 equals nine minutes. Okay, so that's enough to start the analysis. Here are these equations that I've copied from a previous slide and we can go ahead and use them to calculate the results. So t is 0.1837 and the flow rate is in cubic feet per minute. And I would urge you to write the units out. The slope is in it's 10 feet. So let's go and check the units. So that cancels with that, with one of those. And so that'll become two. So the units will be feet squared per minute. And if we go and do that calculation out, I get 0 0.128 feet squared per minute for the transmissivity. The next step will be to calculate the stortivity and that'll be S is 2.25 times the value of T that we just calculated. I'm going to just round this to one, or 0.13 feet squared per minute. T sub zero is nine minutes and R, well, R is right here. These data were measured at a monitoring well, and so R is the radial distance from the pumping well to the monitoring well. So that would be 50 squared feet squared. So check the units. That cancels with that. Minutes and minutes. And then we go and put this into our calculator, and we get 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 or 10 to the minus 3 for the stortivity. Okay, so those are the average aquifer parameters uh, according to our analysis. And now the next step will be to determine the, uh, well actually, let's see. So there's T and S and K. K will be equal to T over B. So that'll be 0 0.13 feet squared 
per minute divided by 25 feet. So that'll give us K in units of feet per minute. So we'll get K there. Uh, the next thing will be to calculate the well efficiency. So what we need to do for that is to calculate the, um, what the let's see, we need to calculate the drawdown at the monitoring well, assuming that the T and S values are, um, are assuming that it's homogeneous throughout the aquifer right up to the well casing. And so we just use this equation here and um, replace the uh, replace R use um, use the radius of the well right here. So let's go ahead and do that. I just combined those terms to make it uh, 0 0.183 times 7 cubic feet per minute divided by T which is 0 0.13 feet squared per minute. And now we're going to need to have this log term and it's kind of kind of large so what I'm going to do is erase some of this stuff here and again I've combined the numbers here so that's 0 0.13 feet squared per minute T now it's important to remember TM what we're going to do here is compare the drawdown that we're calculating to the drawdown that we're observed that was observed at the same time and we're going to use this drawdown up here so we need to use the correct time and that'll be a thousand minutes and r squared that will be I'm going to put it right here 0 0.25 squared feet squared and then s would be 0 0.001 Okay, so let's check out the units. So there's a feet, there's feet squared canceling with feet squared, a minute and minute. So the argument of the log term here is dimensionless, which is what is needed. And then out here, there's feet squared, and that reduces it down to just feet, and the minutes cancel. So the overall units will be unit, will be feet, and so we'll get a drawdown measurement in units of feet. So I went and calculated this in two parts. This log term I get to be 6.67. The, the product of these two uh, works out to be 65 feet. Okay, so 65 feet is what we expect the drawdown to be. What we observe it to be is 90 feet, so the drawdown is greater than expected and what we infer then is the extra drawdown that we observe is as a, as a result of well skin. So the efficiency, that's going to be equal to the um, expected 65 feet divided by observed 90 feet, and that's 0.73. Okay, so there's the well efficiency. Now we need to calculate the specific capacity. So specific capacity we'll do here in just a second, but before we get to that, I want to show you about calculating the transmissivity from the recovery data. So we said the recovery data was here, and what I did was to fit the recovery data with a line and notice how I'm using these data here preferentially over the data here. That point doesn't fit, but these points do fit quite well. And that's because down at this end is the early time data, and I'm preferentially fitting to the later time data. And so what I've done is to calculate the slope by going and by making this box that's, that's one log cycle one log cycle would go from 1 to 10, but it would also go from, from say, 2 to 20. 
and so I've just I've made a box that is the same length as 1 to 10, but I've slid it over a little bit because the green line intersects the axis right there. And so I've lined it up with where the green line intersects the axis here, and then I have this box, the width of the box is one log cycle, and then it comes up here and intersects the green line again so I can come over there and read the delta, delta y, the distance between there and there. And again, my stylus is off a little bit. That arrow should be moved up a little bit. And it, it looks like the delta y here is about 9.5 feet. OK, so that's the, that's the um, slope because it's 9.5 feet per log cycle. And we can calculate the transmissivity from this. And so I did that calculation out, and it's a little bit more than 0.13, but I'm just going to round it down to 0.132. So now we've analyzed the recovery, and we got a little bit different value than what we got during pumping, but essentially it's supporting the value that we got from pumping. It's consistent with that. So the next step is to evaluate the steady state specific capacity, and we have the values that we need to do this, so let's just write it out. So it's 2 pi so this will be then divided by here we have units of feet squared per minute so that looks good and now we gotta go and crunch the numbers, I get this as a result, 0 0.11 feet squared per minute. So that's the steady state specific capacity. Now, what we might do is to write this a little bit differently. We could write it like this, 0 0.11, well, actually, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to go over here, 0 0.11 cubic feet per minute per foot of drawdown. Okay, That has the same units as this, but it preserves the concept of the specific capacity being the flow rate, cubic feet per minute, per foot of drawdown. According to this value for a specific capacity, we'd need, we'd need 10 feet of drawdown to get around 1 cubic foot per minute of pumping.